Zang Clockwalter, Preston Leinenbach. It's our series wrap-up after Evansville completed a three-game series sweep over the Gateway Grizzlies. They're now tied for first in the West Division at 17 and 10. Yeah, very good homestand. Very good, uh, what, I guess two weeks now since so like that Canadian trip, which we thought was going to set the team back really just because of the circumstances of revolving around that. But yeah, very good week. Uh, well, I guess end up being five, five and one, six yes. in the homestand. That's pretty good. You'll take it. You've got uh, some guys starting to find their their role and find their groove offensively, which is good to see. Miles Gordon has had a big week uh, for the others, the Otters. And then, of course, the pitching has been really solid as well. Maybe, maybe not dominant from a starting standpoint, but everybody, in terms from the start of the game to the bullpen, you know, Sawyer on the back end, it seems like it's all coming together. And, uh, just great team performance from a pitching standpoint. Give credit, too, to Steven Sinsley. You know, on Sunday in the finale, the Otters had that 3-1 lead. It seemed a little tedious because we know how good Gateway can be. And mm -hmm. in the eighth inning, Steven Sinsley's two-run bomb kind of cemented that Otter sweep. Yeah, and that was big time for him because it seemed like he was starting to catch his groove a little bit and had to miss some time the past week. And maybe it wasn't quite back to 100% this weekend, but to see him send one, especially toward that right center area, uh, that was big. And, 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 again, I think he's making the right steps to uh, bring that batting average up a little bit and really find a way to contribute to this team. Zach Bierman as well continues Red to be a, a thorn in the side of the Gateway Grizzlies. He torched him at GCS Ballpark right. with several home runs and then had another big series this weekend. Right, and he's obviously a very versatile player. He's played multiple positions, but having that strong, consistent left-handed bat and, and, and from a two spot, like probably for most teams, he's you know the main three hole, four hole hitter that's gonna you know rack up the RBIs, but I mean, he's still doing that. But he's in, in the two spot where he's kind of in the between being the RBI guy plus getting on base, and he's doing a little bit of everything. But yeah, really a thorn in the side of the Grizzlies this past week, going back to the road uh, swing last week. That's the screaming eagle here amongst the two of us. I have to point out the starting pitching this weekend was really cool if you're a USI supporter. Yeah. How about Bryce Dudeville on? Friday night, you had Jacob Bowles on Saturday and Austin Gossman on Sunday. All three of them started, all three of them Southern Indiana products. All three of them also got no decisions, but they put their teammates in position to win. Yeah, they all pitched well. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They were able to give um, the team a chance, able to get to the bullpen, let those guys take over because with, with Studeville, it was kind of, I, I wouldn't say last second, but because of Holgrafer signing with the Royals, he was supposed to start Friday night. Well, Studeville steps right in and pitches great. Um, only one earned run in five innings. Uh, I was, you know, kind of interested to see, you know, where there be some nerves for him. Didn't seem like it. Steps right in. Bulls really kind of making a spot start with the rotation, just kind of in and out right now. They're trying to get back on schedule. And it gave Evansville a good quality chance on Saturday. You know, gave him the chance to win. And then Gossman coming back from missing a good chunk of time himself this past week. I mean, it looked like he didn't miss a beat. He was, no, racking, he up was, the, he was met, racking up the strikeout still. He was in a good pace. And I must say, it was really cool for me personally. You know, I covered Bryce when he was a high school athlete in Spencer County for my newspaper I work at. Announced his games in college and then to be behind the microphone for his professional debut was really, really cool. And he mm -hmm. really did an awesome job with a lot of his family and friends in the house that night as well. Right, yeah. It's just been kind of the, in terms of the last few years, the USI acquisitions for the Otters have seemed to all pan out pretty well. I mean, I can't think of many, if, if any, in the last few years since I've started here that have not worked out. I mean, you can go back to Chavarria a few years ago. I mean, it's yeah, Matt Chavarria, and he, if we remember about him, he was on the back end of a combined no-hitter with Ty Hensley. Right. So uh, even though there's a lot of people you know who look at USI this past year, the last couple of years say, oh, they weren't very good, they still have the talent. It's just for, for some reason they, over on the west side, they haven't really pieced together a good season the last couple of years, but the talent's there. No, for sure. And then one other thing, you did mention Tim Holdgrave for our congratulations to him as he was signed with the Kansas City Royals organization on Friday. And mm -hmm. kudos to the Otters and everyone involved with that pregame ceremony, honoring him and then letting him have that first pitch on his way to Kansas City, right? Yeah, it's kind of a last-second deal yeah. for all of us. <laughs> from, was, yeah. I mean, from the, from early Friday morning through the end, it was called kind of you know put together because he had done so much for this team going back to last year, his first season with the team already off to a great start this year with the Otters. I mean. Uh, you know, it's kind of sad for us to see him leave. He was such, you know, a good pitcher, but also just a good guy. But uh, we wish him the best. Yeah, uh, .67 ERA yeah. and four games started. I mean, what more do you have to do at the front? Had a to get 13 the strikeout game already this season, where 
rumor has it, he wasn't particularly feeling well that, that game, and he went out there and pitched a gym. Yeah, he did. And so the Otters played themselves a great series this week. And again, as I mentioned, 17 and 10, there are seven mm -hmm. games over 500. A two-game trip to Schaumburg on Tuesday and Wednesday, an off day on Thursday, and then the Otters are back here Friday mm -hmm. through Sunday. Lake Erie is back in town, and yeah. two of those three nights, fireworks. Fireworks, finally. We're getting to the fireworks part we of the are. summer, which right. makes it really feel like summer. I mean, with Friday, you got Bossy Fields' anniversary as well as the Otters' birthday, by the way. But the first post-game fireworks show, Saturday, we got the rescheduled superhero night of her even though we played the game we back in May, it was not we the We didn't greatest. have the pageantry of We didn't have the pageantry. So the superheroes, your favorite superheroes, will be here next Saturday on the 18th. And then the 19th, salute to the Negroes League night, which I think is going to be another great night. It was last year. And it's it Father's was, Day too, right? It is Father's Day. And so it was great seeing those players wearing the replica throwback jerseys of the Negro Leagues and representing the different teams. I mean, they looked authentic. They looked yeah. real. And it was so cool, of course, to learn the history of those jerseys as well. And Yeah. And then you get most more post-game fireworks next Sunday. Yeah, so it's a fun-filled weekend next weekend here at the ballpark. Tickets are still on sale at EvansvilleOtters.com. A big thanks to Big Red, Jordan Fisher, Preston Leinenbach. I'm Zane Klotfelter. This has been Otters TV.